if we look at skin uh, disorders, in, in movement disorders, um, we look at a different set of conditions in Parkinsonian disorders, and we look at a much broader set of conditions in the hyperkinetic disorders. So what we know in Parkinson's disease is that these patients very commonly uh, suffer from seboroic dermatitis. So we, we can just see it directly from the door that this patient uh, has a skin condition. Um, they may have uh, more commonly present rosacea and uh, quite rarely, but uh, it may be rather severe bullous pemphigoids, uh, which is a blistering condition. Um, we know very little about skin conditions in atypical Parkinsonism. Although we know there are changes, there is basically minimum or nearly no uh, published information on skin disorders in atypical Parkinsonism in terms of the clinical uh, phenotype. If we go to uh, hyperkinetic disorders, uh, there is a number of very specific conditions that point to a very specific group of movement disorders. For example, uh, lipomas, very typically uh, related to uh, mitochondrial disorders, or angiokeratomas, pointing to, again, uh, Fabry disease and related uh, conditions. Systemic um, inflammatory conditions like lupus or Sydenham's cornea, which, which have typical uh, skin changes like, uh, like um, erythema marginatum or malarash in lupus. And these are very commonly linked to uh, hora, especially in children and adolescents. So it's important to know that these may be um, um, started by a skin condition or they may be started by movement disorder as a primo manifestation. So these skin conditions are not uh, always present. So, and we could go on like um, tendon xanthomas in cerebral tendinous xanthomatosis, etc. So it's really important to look at the skin in our patients because it can show us a very specific diagnosis. So, so it's really important to look because oftentimes we as neurologists have no idea what we see on the skin and these conditions are literally hiding in plain sight just uh, in front of us.